Man, week six. And the Tennessee Titans across the pond playing the Ravens on Sunday. Terrible London accent. But will the Titans come back from London with a win? Or are we going to have more questions than answers? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Front of Chief Seats. Hey, welcome back. It's your host, Bonafide, and this is From the Cheap Seats, a show where we preview everything about the Tennessee Titans this season, but with a fan's perspective. So we're going to jump right into it. We're talking about the Ravens versus the Titans in London, baby. We're across the water. This is our international game. We're playing at, like, what is it called? Totten Hotspur Stadium. Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's... It's a soccer stadium. They converted it, made it for the NFL, but we playing in London. And um, the the Titans just got in today, and they practiced today. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but the Ravens, they're 3-2, and two, and they just lost to a division rival, uh, the Steelers, 17-10 to last week. Uh, they got a new OC, just like us, Todd Monkey, who came from the Bulldogs at Georgia. <laughs> He's back in the league. And uh, from all accounts and purposes, hey, man, it look, looks like he's going well. Lamar Jackson is uh, still a dual-threat quarterback who can beat you with his arm and his legs. Uh, he's got eight total touchdowns this, uh, this season. He's got four passing TDs and four rushing TDs. So he's actually got more TDs rushing <laughs> than Tannehill does passing. But that that wasn't fair. That wasn't fair. I shouldn't have took that shot. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> let's move on. Mark Andrews is still his safety blanket. He's healthy now. They got Zay Flowers. Uh, I think he came from Boston College, and he's kind of producing. I think he's their leading receiver. Uh, They're going to pair him up with uh, Odell Beckham Jr. and Rashad Bateman. And their defense, albeit it's not the 2000 defense, is still good. And they got, you know, Jadavion Clowney. You remember him from our Titans days. They got him on there. And um, they got Humphreys in the secondary. Kyle Hamilton, their draft pick from a couple years ago, is really playing really good. And they got Roquan Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, who could be considered like one of the better inside linebacker duos. So, yeah, they got some injury concerns, but um, nothing that's really going to affect this game this week. So uh, they can absolutely score the ball. uh, And they play good defense, which has been their calling call. Now, when we look at all of that, and then we turn around and we look at our Tennessee Titans. We got some major concerns. And my major concerns is if we can even score. We don't have a George Pickens or a deep threat like they had for the Steelers that can threaten the uh, uh, the Baltimore defense deep. Uh, that would have been Burks, but, you know, he's not here. More on that later. Uh, and looking at our offense, I'm, I'm kind of struggling to see how we're going to move the ball against this defense like like i said in my last video you know we talked about the struggle for ryan Tannehill. you know has had this uh, this season and now normally uh this would be a game that we would say oh you know this is one of those games that we're not expected to win if we're gonna win i i i can't i can't see it being that type of game um now i can see the defense kind of making plays and doing what they need to do to keep us in the game um, shutting down that rushing attack for Lamar Jackson and, 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 you know, you know, forcing Lamar to kind of make some mistakes. But it's the offense, man. I just I, I don't see us scoring enough points to win this game. Um, and then another thing that I'm concerned about and then we move on to the injury report is like I don't I don't get why we didn't leave earlier. The Ravens have been over there all week long. They've gotten acclimated. They're probably the jet lag is probably through to through now. We just got there today, Friday, and we practice. So uh, I saw Paul Kaharski on uh, uh, some of his Twitter uh, tweets. He was uh, asking the guys, did they get any sleep? And most of them say, yeah, they got a couple of hours of sleep and, you know, things like that. Maybe they catch up later on tonight. You know, they don't do too many things. But yeah, man, like <laughs> I'm not confident, like. Are they going to have? A, 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 are they going to be good enough to to kind of play this game on, on there, or will it be a factor? But I, I'm just not a fan of. But we don't know because, like I said, this is the last time we went over there. This is exactly what they did before. So yeah, I'm kind of concerned about the offense and this jet lag. Um, uh, so who's in? Who's out? Traylon Burks is out again. So is uh, Molden 
and get them. And they didn't even make the trip, so they're not even on the plane. So Traylon is out hurt again. So there goes another weapon that we could have used in this game, especially when we're the offense is already struggling. So yeah, we're going to talk about him in the bye week uh, when we make some videos. We're going to drop some videos and some content during the bye week. But Tier Tart is made the trip. He's listed as questionable, and we really need him on Sunday. Last Sunday really showed uh, that when he's missing, it's really noticeable, especially in the run game. Now Simmons got banged up last game, but you know he's not designated on the uh, on the uh, injury report, so he's going to be there. So we should be a full go on Sunday. So, and, and in regards to the Ravens injury report, they're pretty much healthy. I thought OBG, OBJ was out, but he's good to go with the ankle. So they're going to have almost a full complement of players. So I heard somebody say this is probably the shortest injury report that um, shoot the Ravens have had all season. So yeah. Put that on the board for another thing we got to worry about. All right. So next up is Gridiron Gambles. And as we know, this section is always sponsored by Music City Bets. You can follow them on X or Twitter, if you still call it Twitter, at MusicCityBets.com for all of your gambling plays, parlays, your straights, your spreads, and everything. So I Gridiron, 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 I got that. Is that, is that, is that the English come out? Gridiron, <laughs> whatever. Our gridiron's gamble of the day is that we're going to take the over 41.5. So on this game, we're taking the over 41.5. Maybe Music City Bet sees something I don't see. Uh, and maybe we got an offensive explosion on the way. But this is always sponsored by Music City Bet. So make sure you get in there, all your gambling, all your bets, uh, betting apps. Make sure you get in there and make that play. All right. Now. Uh, this segment is called the turning. So this game is a major turning point for the 2023 Tennessee Titans. And it's crazy, man. It's crazy to me that we've gotten there and it's only week six. Like I said earlier, given our history, this would be one of them games we inexplicably win. We win it like we just, we just <laughs> you know, we just dominate this win. Remember that game we in, in the COVID season when we beat the Bills? And nobody thought we was going to win because we only had like three days worth of practice. It's like, this is like one of those games we're going to win. But I don't think it's going to happen this year. You know what I'm saying? Because this offense, now, again, they shown flashes. I mean, last game, DeAndre Hopkins had eight catches for 140 yards. Uh, but they just haven't given me the confidence that they can actually move the ball uh, against this Ravens defense, man. I, I you know, they got 18 sacks on the season, man. They're the number one, they're the number two, I think, the number two defense in the league. They got Jadavion Clowney guy getting pressure on the quarterback. And I know he looking at uh, Andre Dillard like he a filet mignon dinner, some fish and chips, if I might even say, since we're across the pond. But um, now, the Ravens beat themselves last week with a lot of drops and missed touchdowns. And, you know, they let Pickens get that Randy Moss go route where they lost the game right there. But, you know, I don't see them making them same mistakes two games in a row. Do you see the Baltimore Ravens having 10 drops in the end, 10 drops total? Some even in the end zone. Do you see that happening? I don't. So that's why I said this game is a major turning point. Now, we get a lot of talking from the team in the pro skating pressers. Oh, you know, we got to do better. We got to play better. Things like that. But right now, my boys, hey, it's, it's time to put up or shut up. All that talk is cheap. This is the game that you got to win. <laughs> you can use all them colloquial phrases that you want to with the media. But the fans, and we know. We know. The fans, we know. This is the game. Now, if you win this game, this might be the boost that you need to go on to the playoff. I talked about it in the last video. When we swapped out Marcus Mariota for Ryan Tannehill, we got that boost and we went nine and seven and we made it to the playoffs and we rolled that all the way to the AFC championship game. Now, that this win on Sunday across the pond will be the catalyst that we need to say, hey, you know, we finally put it all together. We righted the ship and then we go on a little run. But man, let me tell you something. If we don't win <laughs> this Sunday morning, it gotta be some changes, man. It, some changes have to take place possibly on both sides of the ball. I, I, I don't believe anyone is going to get fired. Like, I don't, I'm going to tell you that right now. Nobody's getting fired. This ain't the same situation from last year where we, everybody wanted Todd Downing fired. But some people got to get benched. Somebody, some, some got to be, something got to happen. 
you know, at this point, if and when we lose, because I'm really thinking that give me an insight into my prediction for the game. Uh, I want to see uh, Willis and or Levis uh, with the best five offers online. That means that you bench Andre Dillard because he's probably going to get cooked this weekend. I- I'm just nervous thinking about it. We, you know, you know we'll hold out hope. Uh, and, and see what we can do with a, a whole week of planning, implementing game plans and things like that. We're going to need to see some drastic changes, uh, even if they aren't season saving. Like if, if these even if these changes don't save our season, we need to see something. man. Got to see something go because, you know, <laughs> something's got to change. But in my heart of hearts, I already know Mike Vrabel is not going to change a dog up. But I'm holding out hope because, like I said, he was the one that made the switch. At least he thinks about it or at least he does it because that's a long plane ride home to only come back after a loss and keep doing the same thing over and over again. So my final thoughts, uh, I, to be honest, I don't think we have enough on the offensive side of the ball to be confident to get a win. Uh, the defense, you know. While they're not doing great, they should be able to you know, hold their own, especially when we get Tierra Tart back. Um, limiting Lamar Jackson is the key to the game. If we can stop Lamar Jackson from running and, and, and getting those opportune tight end uh, throws to the tight end, Mark Andrews and Zay Flowers, we might have a chance in this game. Uh, but yeah, honestly, to tell you the truth, I, I really don't think we're going to take, come take this. So my prediction for the game is that we're going to take the L uh, 28 28 to 13. I'm 28 to 13. I say we get, uh, you know, three field, two field goals. Nick Folk continues to do what he's supposed to do. Um, and we just can't overcome the bad offense, the jet lag, all of that. And we take this flight home and it's going to be a long week. So hopefully, hopefully I'm wrong. I've been, <laughs> been wrong on some of these predictions, uh, but hopefully I'm wrong. So tune in to the next episode where we're going to give you a whole recap of what happened in London on Sunday. Also, during the bye week, we're going to be trying to drop a video every day talking about some different topics that have to do with this season. I'm not going to spoil them all, but it's definitely going to be something you want to be able to tune in. So make sure you got your notifications turned on if you're a subscriber. And don't forget, don't forget, once we hit 500 subscribers, because we're getting close. Once we hit 500 subscribers, that's going to kick off our 1K jersey giveaway so all you have to do is be a subscriber to the channel this means if you are a subscriber number 34 you're going to be entered into this contest and we're going to keep it going all the way up to 1k and somebody is going to win a free throwback jersey oilers throwback from yours truly so make sure you like comment share and subscribe and tell all of your friends that there is plenty of room in the section for them so until the preview recap video tighten up